planets and suns race toward infinity. Dead worlds and live worlds alike, separated by millions of light years. And yet, these members of the galaxy in this age of space travel have become interdependent, not only economically, but politically. This is the far-off galaxy of Magna Mater, the galaxy of dead planets, icy graveyard rolling through space, and each with a communication station. And now the sky flash carrying Flash Gordon, Dale and Dr. Zarkov, enters the outer rim of Magna Mater on a routine outer space patrol. Suddenly, all around them, the tranquil peace of these dead worlds is shattered. First, the dead planet Isis. Next, it was Osiris. Next came Mithra. And finally, Bacchus. And in the sky flash. I don't understand it. First Isis, then Osiris, Mithra and Bacchus shattering in space. It's weird, Doctor. Crazy. Four planets blowing up in rapid succession. Why? Why should that happen? It seems to be some mysterious atomic force, Flash. Possibly a chain reaction operating from some central source. Well, it's about the last of the chain, Doctor. There's only one dead planet left, and that's Minerva. And there it is. Dead ahead. Dale, will you check the Geiger counter? We're coming into a very heavy radioactive dust fall, Doctor. Check its type. Yes, sir. Horizontal, 105. Vertical, 10. Why, it's radioactive dust from durinium. Durinium? Impossible. Why, Doctor? Is it indigenous to a particular area or planet of the galaxy out of this range? Yes, it's found only on Colossia. But it's not only that. Durinium was only discovered a few years ago, Flash. Dr. Zarkov made an extensive study of its properties for GBI research and analysis. I found it to be probably the most powerful fissionable material in the universe. And the slowest. What do you mean, the slowest? Well, unlike other nuclear materials, its fission is a slow, creeping process. We estimated that a bomb made of durinium would take over 1,200 years to explode. Then it couldn't be durinium, Dale. If it was a bomb that exploded those planets, it had to be put there in, let's see, 1953. I'll check again. No, it still comes out durinium. Something wrong on Minerva, too. I'd better contact the communication station. Skyflash Earth Patrol calling Minerva. Skyflash calling Minerva. Come in, Minerva. Come in. Minerva, come in. I can't get through the communication stations out. What now? Let's move in, see if we can get a better look. Why should the communication station be out on Minerva? Flash, we can't move through this atomic fog much longer without getting contaminated. I know, but we need information. For all we know, that chain reaction explosion may move from this galaxy into others. Maybe we can find the clue on Minerva. Get out of here. Report back to Earth. And now the sky flash pointed its nose toward home. But on Earth itself, strange things were happening. Foreboding events foretelling a monstrous end. a series of freakish weather disturbances. And after that... And panic and fear spread through every corner of the earth like wildfire. And at the Galaxy Bureau of Investigation, Commissioner Herrick interrogates a strange captive picked up by Earth agents. A Callison whose planet had sworn eternal war against the earth. Are you frightened, Commissioner Herrick? There were small explosions today that have destroyed cities, flattened mountains, inundated half a continent of your Earth. These are just teasers. 
These were just natural phenomena, not man-made. Fool. What do I argue with you? In one hour, your precious earth explodes. At 12 o'clock noon, there will no longer be an earth to poison the galaxy. You're lying. You're trying to frighten us. Am I? Then look at the fate of Isis, Osiris, Mithra, Bacchus. They're all gone, blown into eternity. All right. I believe you. What do you want to stop it? Name your price. Price? What can you offer when in one hour there will be nothing? Avoid. <laughs> Does that make you feel better, Commissioner? Come ahead, do it again. But hitting me will not find the Dorinium bum smoldering into its final stage of fission. Who planted this Dorinium bomb? I did. You? When? Exactly. Exactly. Twelve hundred and eight years, five months, three weeks, one day, twenty-three hours and two minutes ago. You speak the truth. You've stolen Dr. Zarkov's time machine. Just the principle, Commissioner. Our Galassian scientists developed it in their own way, as one who has traveled back in time. Commissioner, let me tell you, it was an interesting experience. Where did you plant that Duranium bomb, eh? Where did you bury it? You will find out for yourself, Commissioner, very soon. Alan, you're sure the Geigers indicate nothing? Nothing. No, Commissioner. And they won't until fission. It's useless for you to try and locate it. At this late point in its reaction, it gives no telltale signal. You have less than one hour to live, Commissioner. You and every other Earth man. If we die, you die with us. I am a Colossian patriot. To die in this cause is an honor. Alan. Yes, sir. Establish contact with the Sky Flash at once. It's cruising in the Magnamata galaxy. If Flash Gordon or Dr. Zarkov don't come up with an answer. Calling Sky Flash. GBI headquarters. Calling Flash Gordon to the Sky Flash. Come in, Flash Gordon. That's the story. The whole story. Flash, Dr. Zarkov. We've got to figure out some way to find and deactivate the bomb. Otherwise, the Earth is doomed. There's less than one hour. A second after 12 and it'll be too late. There won't be an Earth to come back to. We're helpless up here. Completely helpless. Oh, Dr. Zarkov, there must be a way out. There must be. There's only one thing that I can think of. What is it? Lock the controls. Decelerate the ship below sonic speed. Come in here. The time machine. It's our only chance. We've got to project ourselves back into the past just as the Colossum did. We must go back through time to the middle of the 20th century. The year 1953. If we can find out where the Colossum planted that Derinium bomb, then we have a chance. How much of a chance, Doctor? A thousand to one. A million to one. Then let's take it. What's our speed now, Flash? We're at landing speed, Doctor. Three five oh an hour. Good. Now I'm going to ask you both to hold on. For the next few moments, you will be traveling back through time. The effect will be strange, possibly stupefying. You will hear nothing, see nothing, know nothing, until you are back in the sixth decade of the 20th century. 
Are you both ready? Ready, Doctor. Now in the sixth decade of the 20th century. There it is, Dale. The Earth as it looked 1,250 years before we were born. How strange it looks. It's some kind of city, Doctor. I'm trying to check it in this book of ancient maps. From this description, that must be a place called Washington, the capital of an ancient nation called the United States. What's our direction? East by north. Another city coming up. Mm. That must be New York. New York? What a strange name. Dale, set the Geiger counter for Derinium and see if you can get me a reading. Yes, Dr. Zarko. I am getting a reading, Doctor. The geranium bomb is here, somewhere on Earth. Where, Dale? Can you locate it? Not quite. The signal is very weak, but it's a long distance from here, almost due east. No, Dale. East by north. And from the signal strength, I'd say over 3,000 miles away. East by north it is. Doctor, do you think we'll be able to exactly locate the geranium bomb? I can only hope so, Dale. The Earth as we know it has only a half hour to live before it explodes. Well... There's nothing we can do until we cross the ocean. What kind of a world is it that we're going back to? Well, from what I remember of ancient history, it was very primitive. Just think, nobody ever reached a height of more than 15 miles. Well, it was primitive to our way of thinking, Dale. And they just scratched the surface of atomic research. And they had to build tremendous motors housed in gigantic buildings to run the machines they used in manufacturing. It does seem ridiculous when you consider that in our century, a motor the size of my fist has more power than the gigantic steam-driven turbines they used. What about the people? What were, I mean, what are they like? They considered our Earth just as precious as we do. And most of them believed in freedom, peace, equality of opportunity. But I guess, just like in our time, there are those who, for power, would make slaves of everybody else. Yes, I'm afraid so. But they didn't have our tools to fight them with. And the women, Dr. Zarkov, what were they like? Well, instead of filling their heads full of knowledge about astrophysics, atomic research, electronic phenomena, like a certain young lady we know... Yes, well, what did they do? Sit home and knit? Well... I wouldn't say that was all they did. But they certainly knew their way around a kitchen better than they did around a laboratory. Strange craft at two o'clock. Oh. In a moment, we'll be able to see it out the light window. Let's see. What is that clumsy craft, Doctor? That's an aeroplane. Did you see the way it was pulled through the air by those gigantic egg beaters? I'll bet it couldn't do more than 300 miles per hour. No wonder they didn't cruise around in outer space. A clumsy craft like that would have trouble getting off the ground. Well, that thing on the water is even funnier than the airplane. Man, that was a ship. You see, air travel was only about 50 years old at this time. And a great deal of travel over land and water was still popular. What a world to live in. Yes. As Dale said, primitive. But a world. Something we won't have to go back to unless we find that derinium bomb. And quickly. Where are they? Why don't we hear from them? There's nothing we can do about it now, Alan, except wait. Wait and pray. 
Land coming up, Doctor. 11.35. It took us exactly five minutes to cross the ocean. City coming up at two o'clock, Doctor. That must be a place called Paris. Flash, slow down. The Geiger's up to maximum. We're almost in the immediate vicinity of the bomb. Flash, look. The Geiger's hit maximum. That means the bomb is directly below us. It must be someplace in that city. What's the name? Berlin. Finding the bomb there is going to be like searching for a neutron and a molecule. We can find it with this. The question is, can we find it in time? Flash, is there someplace we can land? There's a clearing below. We can hide the ship there for a while. Good. The inhabitants may be hostile. And that's true. If we don't find that bomb in 20 minutes, it will be all over. We'll find it. We've got to find it. Hang on, 20th century. Here we come. Landing positions, everybody. The Sky Flash has landed in the forest outside of Berlin, having with its occupants, Flash Gordon, Dale Arden, and Dr. Zarkoff, been projected by the time machine, 1,250 years back through time to Berlin, with only 20 minutes remaining for the Earth to exist. Commissioner Herrick, pinning all of his hopes on Flash Gordon, waits tensely while the Callison, who planted the Earth-destroying bomb, sits calmly by. All over Berlin, people have seen a strange object spinning and glittering in the sky. It is thought that this weird visitation from some other planet has landed somewhere in the outskirts of Berlin. Reports from Paris and New York also indicate that this flying pencil, or whatever it is, was sighted in those areas. Meanwhile, the people of Berlin wait in dread and terror for what will come next. Achtung, Achtung, all cruise cars be on the lookout for strange invaders believed to have landed from outer space somewhere in the vicinity of Berlin. It is believed car has been commandeered by a bearded giant and a blonde giant from outer space. Apprehend and arrest them. If they resist, shoot to kill.
ahead, Doctor. I'll cover you if there's trouble. Now, count that. Fifty-seven. Fifty-six. Fifty-five. Fifty-four. Fifty-three. Fifty-two. Fifty-one. Hurry, Flash. Only thirty seconds left. Plenty, Dale. We had two seconds to spare. <laughs> it looks as though this tired old world will still be around for a while. Yes. Whatever flashed it, it worked. Get I watched the route coming out. I think I can get us back there. Flash, let's stay here in our ancestors' time for a few days. It should be fun telling them everything that's going to happen to them for the next 1,200 years. Fun? Well, maybe for us, Dale, but not for them. It is the mystery of the future that provides the challenge for men to make history. Take that away and there's no reason for dreams, ambition, discovery. Well, I hadn't thought of it that way. You're right, of course, but... Well, it would have been fun to meet my great multiplied by 100 grandfather. <laughs> and a few hours later, as night falls on Berlin, into the starlit sky flashes a silvery streak. Suddenly, it stops. It seems to hang for a moment, suspended in air. Then, before the eyes of a few stargazers and lovers who observed it, the sky flash disappeared into the future from whence it came. The Earth, tamed, cultivated, and ruled by a civilization of people existing upon its surface, harbors another civilization deep in its very core. Ruled by Zaldu, a despot, who, determined to break free of the confines of a subsurface kingdom, constructed a machine to blast a passage to the surface with the raging fires of the Earth's heart. But Flash Gordon, with the help of Dale Arden and Dr. Zarkov, destroyed the machine and escaped back to their subsurface ship, the Earthworm, before they were consumed by the fires that their own destruction unleashed. 
It was many months later when Dr. Zarkov, back in his laboratory at GBI headquarters, perfected a video machine capable of penetrating the Earth's stratus to determine just how great was the destruction in Zaldo's kingdom. Have you seen any signs of life down there, Dr. Zarkov? Not yet, Dale. The passages are clear. There's no signs of destruction at all. But that's impossible. Why, when we escaped, flames were licking at our heels, explosions breaking out, walls falling down. That's what's worrying me. Everything seems to have been cleaned up. Yet there's no sign of life. At this very moment, 1,500 miles inside the Earth's core, two of the strange creatures of this subworld gaze into a flickering screen. How much longer before I, Zaldu, can gaze upon the outer world? Forgive me, Martinus, but until I find a known magnetic channel to the surface, it isn't possible. I will wait no longer. I will see. Surface world. What are they? Surface people. Maybe they are another kind of surface people than those who come here. They move, but yet they stand still. Strange. Strange. And what is that which they stand in? And all of that surface behind them? It is another part of the surface world, Your Mightiness. It looks solid as though one can walk upon it. Oh, I would see more of the surface world. I will conquer and rule. What can that be? I do not know, Your Mightiness. Even in my wildest dream of what is on the surface, did I imagine a sight like this? Why? All is in such order, like the parts of a machine. The open corridors that lead from one place to another are like wires that go from one part of the machine to the other. And the things that move, can they be other surface people? But of all that I can see, Nothing has the power that I, I do hold in my hands. All that we look at, I can destroy what we blast through with the blasting fires of the Earth's core. I'm going to try and scan through the chambers to see if I can find the fire chamber where the blasting machine was located. If it's still there, I'll bet it's a mess. Dale, adjust the magnetic rectifier up four cycles, quickly. Up four cycles? What is it, Doctor? See for yourself. It's Zaldo's fire chamber. I can't understand it. We saw it destroyed with our own eyes. That Sutherland whipping the slave. Did you recognize it? It's Zaldo's lieutenant. I thought surely he was dead, too. If he lived through it, Zaldo could be alive today, too. Well, if he is, Doctor, he won't rest until he's broken out and destroyed the surface people. Contact flash and Commissioner Herrick on the intercom. Report what we've seen. Yes, sir. Oh, and tell them to check the seismograph readings. If Zaldu is ready to blast through to the surface again, there should be strong tremors, just as there were before. In the same vicinity, do you think? Mm, possibly. Probably. The volcanic fissure they found the last time would be the logical place for them to start. If they do start blasting, Doctor, what can we do to stop them? Are we just coming to that? After you've talked to Flash and Herrick, contact the earthworm hangar. She's to be made ready for descent within the hour. Get me GBI headquarters, please. So what it looks like, at least to Dr. Zarkoff and me, is that the subsurface men are getting ready to try another blast through to the surface. Dale, are you sure? After what we saw with our own eyes, the explosion, the fire, I can't believe it. Flash, there's no doubt about it. The fire chamber is still there and the blaster conduit rebuilt. There haven't been any tremors showing up on the seismograph heavier than usual. Well, they haven't started blasting yet, but once they got the conduit over the fire hole, that's when it will show. Just a second, Dale. Alan, put the finder board on the subsurface. Let's see what the earth tremor patterns look like at the moment.
Nothing shows, Dale, but small tremors. When does Dr. Zarkoff expect the blasting to start? How near ready are they? They're almost ready now. Come here, Dale, look. Call back, Flash. What's he trying to make that poor slave do? Place the conduit pipe over the fire hole. The fire seems so small, Doctor. There's not enough blasting power in that to burn through 1,500 miles of iron and rock. No, of course not, Dale. All we see are the flames that have forced their way through the damper opening. Well, I was just wondering. Otherwise, the whole machine would blow up again. Within the pipe, they've constructed a small derrick. When the pipe is in place, they drop the derrick down, lift the damper, and let the full fire blast escape. We saw it work in reverse when we were in the fire chamber, remember? As we entered, the full force of the blast was shooting up through the conduit pipe. Flash pulled on the lever controlling the derrick fighting the terrific pressure of the escaping flames. Slowly, he lowered it, until finally, the damper completely covered the fire hole. Now I understand. If we had left the damper open a bit, the machine would never have exploded. Exactly. What a horrible moment that was. The pressure building up so that we knew it would explode any second. While outside, the subsurface guards were trying to break through the door to save their king, Zaldu. And speaking of Zaldu, there he is in person, alive. By what miracle, I can't imagine, but alive and ready to give the order to burn through to the surface. Get Flash and Herrick back. The tremor should start again almost immediately. Deputy Commissioner Herrick. Sir Norma Tremor. Any quake areas you haven't covered, Alan? No, sir. Herrick here. The conduit pipe is in place, Commissioner. Watch for major tremors to start almost immediately. Where? Your guess is as good as ours. Well, why don't you try the Oregon area where they tried breaking through before? Nothing, Dale. Because our cook is even quieter than usual. Maybe it's the calm before the storm. <laughs> Commissioner, now, is there anything? Zaldu has just given the order to blast. Yes, Dale, yes. The strongest tremors we've ever registered. With a four-point quake like that, the entire area will be demolished. You're sure those wounds are queued up and ready to go, Dale? Yes, sir. We gave the order ten minutes ago. Tell Dale and Zarkov I'll meet them then. Okay. Pleasure's on its way to those wounds. But you and Dr. Zarkov wait for me. I want to see you before you take off. Okay, Commissioner. Oh, all evacuation. Not to the red line, to the quake area. And uh, order every GBI space trip within one hour flight time to sit down there and help pull those people out. Yes, sir. What is all that paraphernalia you're jamming into the bag, Doctor? Oh, well, a supply of anti-heat serum and plaster gel to protect us within and without. Three atomic demagnetizers, one for each of us. And a supply of oxygen concentrate tubes in case we run into some poisoned air have to use our space helmets. Well, a few more items, you'll be able to open up an electro-medical hardware store. <laughs> Just taking that ounce of prevention will allow us to keep that lovely face of yours alive and ever lovely. Thank you, sir. Now, where is the skewer gadget you've got? I want to see this little man's you for myself. Right over there, Commissioner. There, be a good girl. Take that down to the ship for me, will you? I want to show Commissioner Herrick how this works. Oh, so long, Commissioner. I'll see you in Hades. Oh, the shoe's on the other foot, Dale. I'll be seeing you there. Touché. Bye. Good luck. Zaldu. Let me see this mighty Zaldu. From the glint in your eye, Commissioner, it looks to kill you'd be our best weapon against Zaldu. Very funny. Is he there? Hmm. Not in the fire chamber. See if he's in his throne chamber. Uh, there he is. That? That skinny worm-eaten corpse is Zoldu? That wants to conquer us? And can, Commissioner. In his hands, he holds a power that's greater than any weapon we possess. The power of the Earth's fiery core. If he can bring this fire to the surface, he will unleash it, enveloping the entire surface until the Earth is a ball of flame like the sun. Hey. He can really do this? Unless we can stop him. 
He will do this. I must go. We have no time to spare. Freya, isn't there some way I can hear what he's saying? I'm sorry, I didn't have time to hook up the audio. If you'll call Dr. Abner, he can have it working in an hour. Oh, wait, sir. Bye. And good luck. Water pressure, normal. Check. That's on chambers one, two, three, four, five, all full. That completes the checklist, Flash. Good. Now we're missing just one item, Dr. Zakhoff. What's holding him up? He's introducing Commissioner Herrick to Zaldo. Hi, Doc. All set? Buckle in and we'll take off. Let the joy ride begin. Herrick here. Any reports from the quake area yet? Almost total property damage, sir. Not a building left standing. Loss of life? No figures yet, sir. But it looks bad. Evacuation started? Yes, sir. The estimate it will be cleared out within 12 hours. Well, keep me informed, will you? I'm in Dr. Sarkov's lab. Well, Doctor? Sarkov's in order, sir. Turn on the audio. The surface men will come. Now that we have started blasting through, they will come. But they can't stop me. Nothing can stand between me and my ambition. I will have their lives for what they did to me. I will crush them with a weight as great as a whole world pressing down upon them. Contact the earthworm. Warn Flash that is digging right into a trap. Tell him to turn back right away. I... I can't, sir. We can contact them. What do you mean you can't? You must! But sir, try to understand. As the earth one drives through the strait, the friction is terrific. And so what? The friction creates a heavy electrostatic field around them that destroys every sound wave trying to penetrate it. We are completely cut off from them. Two pencils of light on a radar screen. One moving from the Earth's surface towards the kingdom of Zaldo in the core of the Earth. The other creeping from the core to the surface. The first light indicating a jet-propelled mechanical mole piloted by Flash Gordon. The second light showing the progress of Zaldu's blasting operation to the Earth's surface. Look, the surface people drive closer and closer by the minute. We are ready for them. Nothing must go wrong this time, do you hear? Do you hear? All is in readiness. I have seen to it myself, your mightiness. Tell me, tell me what you have prepared. Tell me again, I must be sure, tell me. When surface ship Reaches point plus one, we cease blasting operations to surface. That's my order. Go on. Then full power of earth fire will be channeled to magnetic activator in the chamber of iron. Yes, yes, and thanks be. The surface ship will be pulled into the chamber of iron yes. and locked into it electromagnetically. Yes, yes. Then I will have my revenge. All the fiery power of the Earth's core concentrated to crush them in a magnetic mind until they are dust. <laughs> Our last possible chance to warn them. Gone. What do you mean? I was hoping that when they reached the subsurface world and stopped, we could get through to them. Of course. The electrostatic field that is isolating them now would be no more, and our radio wave could get through. But now the magnetic activator will isolate them too. It is hopeless. The flash out of the way. With no other means of deciding to stop Zaldu, he can blast this way out. And heaven help us, there is no weapon that can stop him from destroying us. 1,920 kilometers. Outside temperature? 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Hmm. Perfectly normal. Timing and exhaust blast in good order in all jet chambers. This has turned into a joyride. What a contrast to our last trip to the Earth's core. What's your plan when we get there, Flash? I know one thing. 
Zaldu's not going to stop blasting just because we ask him to. There's only one thing to do, Dale. Capture Zaldu himself and bring him to the surface. Then try to find someone in the subsurface kingdom who is willing to rule and live in peace with us. That won't be an easy job. Capturing Zaldu, I mean. I've got a plan, Doctor. If I can steer a direct course into Zaldu's chamber, we can take him by surprise. Yeah. What's that? Of course, but I'm trying to. It's no call. Strange. All jet chambers working perfectly. We veered 20 degrees. As far as I can see on a fast check, there's nothing wrong with the earthworms. That means that a power even stronger than our anti jet motors is pulling us into. I don't know what. He! He! Your Adam is. The heavy point one. Have been turned by the magnetic activator. It is as I wish. It is as I wish. See, Earthfire is now channeled to the magnetic activator in the chamber of iron. The chamber of iron. That will be soon that chamber of death. <laughs> yes. Commissioner Herrick, the tremors have stopped. I know, I know. But they'll start again, Elm. Very soon. And worse than ever, don't stop evacuation. Oh. Poor flesh. Dale. That's a sarcasm. And soon, poor us. comes from all sides. Then, your majesty, they will feel the revenge of Zaldu. Yes, from all directions. It will tear and pull and squeeze every side. Look, look. Each second they draw closer. Even at this moment, no living thing could move a finger. Dead. 
Engineers to redirect the firepower to the escape channel. This time, nothing can stop us. Don't, don't do as I order. And now, now I will taste my revenge. I will see what is left of these miserable surface. Not even their dust is left. This is mine now. With this, Saldu the Mighty will ride a triumph to the surface. And sooner than you think, Saldu, little boy. But you can't be alive. There's a distrusting man for you. Can't even believe his own eyes. I think you deserve an explanation, Zaldu. You see, I knew you wouldn't try and destroy us with heat again. Our plaster gel defeated that try the last time. So he prepared us for your attempt to crush us with magnetic force. Next to heat. The greatest power in this subsurface world is your magnetized iron. <laughs> I thought that somehow you would try to use it against us. Lucky for us, you brought these Atto demagnetizers along, Dr. Zarkov. I won't say better luck next time, Zaldo. You won't have one. But now you have a parting message to send to your subjects. It's short and sweet. Tell them to turn off the fire blaster. Or the mighty Zaldo will be mighty sorry. Attention. Attention. This is Zaldo the mighty. I order you to turn the fire from the surface channel. Do as I order. The planet Tarset, silent, inhabited only by shadows of a civilization long dead. A planet where life of every kind has departed. We must use Tarset, Commander Richards. There is no other planet on which we can conduct our negative gravity experiment. There must be another place. Tarset is out. Tarset is deserted. We can set up our experimental equipment using robot mechanisms and gauge the impulse reactions by electronic equipment set up on the sky flash. I'm fully aware of the importance of your work, Dr. Sarkov, but you'll have to find another planet that will do as well as Tarset. There is none to our knowledge. I told you that before. Tarset is ideal. Well, then you'll have to find some place that's not so ideal. Tarset will not be used. But why? 
Will you please tell me why? You don't know what just happened to the exploratory mission we sent to Tarset? No. I've been in my mountain lab completely out of touch with things. What happened? Well, we'll soon know the details. All I've had up to now are fragmentary reports, but even from them I'd be a murderer if I let you go. Flash Gordon is here, sir, with Dr. Jervis of the Tarset Expedition. Good. Send them in at once. Now we'll get the full story. I'm so sorry, Dr. Jebos. Can I get you something? I don't think he's strong enough to answer any questions right now, Commander. Ever since he landed his spaceship, he's been hysterical. We did what we could to calm him down, but... Now, this is Dr. Jebos, one of the scientists we sent on the exploratory mission to Tarset. Jebos? Of course. You know him? By reputation only. I'm familiar with his treatise on astrohydraulics. Remember, Dale? Oh, that's right, Doctor. He's in a state of complete nervous shock. Well, Dr. Jevis, what happened up there? I'm Dr. Zarkov. What happened on Tarset? Where are the others who went with you? Dead. All dead. How? What happened? Speak up, man. What happened? I'm afraid he won't be able to answer any more questions, Doctor. He's completely... No, no. It's important that they know. I'll do my best. Don't send anyone there. You'll murder every man you send to Tarset. What kind of nonsense is this? Nonsense? Can you call it nonsense? When your own companions are stricken before your very eyes? When suddenly they are dead? For no reason? For no cause? Except the curse. A curse? What curse? A curse. But better for God. Strikes in silence. It will kill anyone who sets foot on that horrible planet. It didn't kill you. Why escape? It's a miracle. Just a miracle. Perhaps you'd better tell us exactly what happened. Yes. Yes, I will. There were four of us in that expedition. Four of us who landed on Tarset. There was Williams. Leader of our company, an outstanding physicist. Know all ye who trespass upon my tomb, that upon ye shall rest my curse forevermore. The voice, that horrible voice, I still hear it. Williams walked towards the idol on the throne. Then suddenly, a blinding light shot down upon him, shooting from its single eye. He fell. Leclerc ran to help him, and the light caught him. Bending and I stood horrified. They were dead. So we turned, we ran. As if evil on the wing were after us, we ran. I heard Bending running behind me. Suddenly he screamed. 
I looked back. The light had him. He fell towards me. I just ran on. A terrifying experience. Don't send anyone to that planet. It's cursed. Ridiculous. We must use Tarset for our negative gravity experiments. Aren't we sticking our necks out? If what happened to him happened to us, we have no choice. The threat to our galaxy from the people of Ebon has never been so serious as it is now. Our only defense will be negative gravity. Find some other place for the experiments. There is no other place. Tarset is the one astrographical location where the repelling force of negative gravity is effective in relation to Earth. Besides, who believes this business of idols and strange curses? It, it's superstitious rot. I saw it. You'll have a chance to see it again. I'm going to toss it. I'm with you, Doctor. Dale? I'm ready to start right now. Well, Dr. Jeffers? We can't make it without you, but if you'll come along as our guide, we can save much valuable time. No. No. I can't. The defense of the galaxy depends upon it. Everything we have, our civilization, our science, everything will be wiped out if the people of Ebon are victorious. How can you refuse? No. Of course you're right. I can't refuse. I'll go along with you to Tarset. Good. Prepare the flight plans, will you, Commander? We'll be off in 48 hours. Come on, Dale. Doctor? Invasions from heaven. Idols. Strange voices and strange lights. Do you think anybody will believe that stuff, Doctor? Idols? Curses? Rot. How can you, a trained scientist, believe it? A man believes what he sees. And I have seen these things. So will you. alive. You did the last time. Maybe we'll be as lucky. Let's go, Doctor. Don't! Please stop here before we all die! this bending just as he fell Williams and McClare yes I am Bell Fagor the voice know all ye who trespass upon my tomb that upon ye shall rest my curse forevermore. Let me out! 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 Let me out!
Professor Jones are trapped. Stay one step out there and you're dead. Oh, we've got to help them. There's nothing you can do. Nothing. Sorry. Professor Gavin! 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 Right, Professor Jevis. If you ever expect to get out of here alive, start telling the truth. The truth? What are you talking about? You saw? I saw plenty. Enough to know that you've been lying from the word go. I haven't. Tell the truth. What's it all about? I don't know. The curse of Belfagor. What kind of a moron do you take me to be, Jevis? Curses. Idols. The next thing you'll be screaming about will be witches riding around on brooms. You're lying. No. You said Bending was killed while running down the corridor with you. But when we found him, his head was towards the idol. He wasn't killed while running away. He was killed before he ever got there. Why did you lie about that? I didn't. All three were killed, but you were allowed to escape. Why? I, I don't know. You do know. Tell me the truth. I won't tell you anything. Let me out. Let me out. It's I, Professor Jevon. Let me out. Let me out. The wolves! They're coming in the crackers! Now will you tell the truth? They're gonna kill you along with the rest of us. No, they can't. They promised to save me. Who? Who promised? The men of Evan. They trapped us in the temple. They told us to help them or die. Williams, Leclerc, Bending chose death. Why is Tarset so important to them? To the invasion. It's coming in this direction. They want to use Tarset as a staging area for their final assault upon Earth. How could you betray your galaxy like that? And worse, watch your, watch your friends die while you agree to help their killers. I don't know. You're crazy. They offered me money, power, and chance to be recognized as the great scientist I was. I'm afraid. I'm afraid to die. You think you have a right to live? Save me. I'm sorry, save me. Talk to the walls, Jealous. Maybe they'll hear you. Call on Belfagor. Maybe he'll listen. The Plot Tarset, a dead, desolate world long deserted by its people. Here in the crumbling temple of Belphegor, the mystic god of death, while Flash fights for his life, Dale and Dr. Zarkov are desperately trying to avoid the touch of the lethal ray emanating from the single eye of Belphegor. In a cell nearby, Flash and the traitor Jeebus, an earth scientist who sold out to the people of Eben, are trapped between two slowly moving walls that threaten to crush them at any moment. A miracle. A miracle. No miracle, Jevis. The walls are so dry and crumbling that the pressure from the moving wall pulverized them. The whole temple is ready to fall. What are you going to do with me now? Right now, I'm interested in Dale and Dr. Zarkoff, not you. Who else is on this planet besides us? Nesbitt. Who's he? A man from heaven. One of their intelligence agents. The one who bribed me. How many with him? I don't know. Some. Maybe three, four. What's behind it all? I told you. They want to use this planet to spearhead an invasion on our galaxy. When? When will it begin? Soon. That's all I know. Soon. I was crazy. I didn't know why I did it. Come in, Dr. Dark.
and bring your charming companion. Come in. Chief of Intelligence to His Exalted Mightiness, Draco, ruler of Eben. Eben? Yes, Eben. You are an unexpected prize, Dr. Zarko. I hardly expected so impressive a bag to fall into my net. I'm easily bored with second-rate theatrics. So why not get to the point? Point one. Don't look for help from Flash Gordon. He and that idiot Jevok are dead by my hand. <laughs> I have spared your life, Dr. Zarkov, up to this point, because you can be of use to my sovereign. My services are expensive. You can name any price. The information we want is worth it. And the information? Complete plans and details of the negative gravity force you have developed. And you must give us the method to combat it. We must know how to smash through it, so we can land our forces on Earth. And if I refuse? You will watch Miss Arden, slowly and painfully, put to death. Well, Dr. Zarkov, what is your answer? His answer is no. But, dear... My life against the millions they could take on Earth? We have no choice, Doctor. We'll see how brave you are, Zarkov, while you watch her slow destruction. The death eye of Belfagor will bring you earthlings to your knees. Take them to the pillars. I'm not scared. Your scientific mind, Dr. Zarkov, won't accept the preposterous idea of an idol possessing a lethal curse. The curse of Belvador is man-made. It's a lethal weapon, not a curse. You have seen the result? Obviously, you have a paralysis ray machine set into the idol's head. Quite right. A paralysis ray machine whose controlled ray cuts through organic matter, destroying the millions of nerves eating its way deep into the very nerve centers until total paralysis is achieved. You're a fiend. Not by choice. This is war. Dale, I can't let them do it. You must. I can't, I can't. You must. And you will. Your last chance, Zarkov. Think. Think. Can you stand there and watch her shrivel slowly? The instant I lower this lever, deterioration begins. He's not going to tell you anything, so turn on your ray. Get it over with. Stop talking, turn it on! Very well. But only a few degrees at first, so you can feel its power. Dale! Dale! Swear to me, Dr. Zarkov, you won't tell them. No. Swear it! All right. You barely felt anything. Now let us see how brave you are, Miss Harden. You! Gordon! God, help me! Flash! The ray machine! Turn it off!
try them. We'll die, just as they did. You exaggerate, Meston. What? Untie them. Flash, how did you figure... It's okay, Dale. I heard him say the ray penetrates organic matter, so I slipped my watch glass over the lens of the machine. Stop the ray dead. That was quick thinking. Yeah, we've got to get out of here. Where's Professor Jevons? I don't know. He sold out to Evan and led us into this trap. It's hard to believe that. That's true. He admitted it to me. We've got to get back to the sky flash and notify Commander Richards immediately. The invasion will about, is about to begin. Stand where you are. Don't make a move. Hey, Hill Draco. Who are these earthlings? They are those who would stand against your exalted mightiness. Flash Gordon, Dale Arden, and the bearded one is Dr. Zarkov. Ah, so, I know of them. Whosoever shall stand between Draco and his destiny shall be grounded to dust. Dark! He didn't know was there. Professor Jevis saw his chance and found the power to balance his books with a little to spare. Flash Gordon in Sky Flash 2 calling Commander Richards at GBI headquarters on Earth. Flash Gordon calling Commander Richards. Richards here. Flash, I've been on tender hooks waiting for your report. Are you sure? This is tremendous news. When you release the news, Commander, one thing you must do. Be sure that all credit is given to Professor Jevis, a great patriot who sacrificed his life in the service of his galaxy. Skyflash 2, signing off. The truth will be our secret. Ready for takeoff. Try to cross for home, will you, Dale? Home it is.